This is the Business Storytelling Show with Christoph Trapp. Name a top 20 storytelling podcast and a top 5% podcast globally, Christoph chats with thought leaders and experts to share tips and tricks that can help you tell your company's stories better to drive business results. Available wherever you listen to podcasts, live streamed on major social media channels, and part of the DB&A television network, available on most U.S. television sets and streaming on Roku and Amazon Fire. Here's Christoph with today's episode. Let's go. Hey, 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 business storytellers. Let's go. Let's get today's episode going. Fist bump. Hey, video storytelling. How do we tell better business stories through video, blogs, and podcasts? Now, you might be surprised. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of video. And you know why? Because it makes you appear so human because you are human. But at the end of the day, if I'm a jerk and you don't like me, you're going to figure that out at some point in our 27-minute discussion that we publish. I don't know how many times a week, a couple of times a week. Um, And that's why I like video. It's a very easy way to get the experts out there, to get the stories out there, to show our human side and go from there. So today's guest, uh, Vikram Rajan, he's uh, with Video Socials. Um, and we're going to talk about what can you do? How do you do better videos? How do you tell stories? And you know, the biggest question I always have is how good, how polished do your videos need to look? Vikram, you tell us how polished do we need to have videos look? You know, there was a time, Christoph. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a great question. It's a good starter question. Because there was a time when we had to be very concerned about the production quality of our videos because it's a reflection of our brand, our corporate personal brand. Um, and I think the the world of video to the detriment of videographers and via- videography production companies has really become democratized um, almost to a fault. I mean, nowadays, like you can watch like major news programs, CNN or any other network, and you know they're streaming from their homes and and they're using really low quality bandwidth video. And I'm not a huge fan of that because I spend a lot of money on my uh, ultra HD TV and all that stuff. And I have to watch like really crappy uh, video resolution on a big screen TV. But outside of that kind of production issues, when it comes to our video blogs and posting on social media or websites, through email, you know, quite frankly, nowadays we all have, for, for the most part, HD quality cameras at our fingertips, our telephones, our smartphones, I should say, uh, our laptops very often have HD cameras. So we don't have to get too concerned about resolution. I think I look pretty good right now. um, And this is pretty good uh, HD resolution. So from the resolution standpoint, we don't have to be too good, uh, too concerned, I should say. And then comes like, like production value in terms of should we have lower thirds and do we need to have things scrolling? Do we need to have uh, cutaways like B-rolls and background music? And I think for a two to three minute video blog that's posted on social media, all that stuff can be really overkill, if not distracting to really the nuggets of knowledge that we're looking to share. You know, we don't need it to be shaky with a a selfie uh, cam, but you could put your smartphone on a tripod and that's going to avoid that. You can be in front of your laptop or your computer and be stable that way. And so I wouldn't get too concerned about all the other stuff, even like the background nowadays. Zoom obviously has a virtual background. I'm not a huge fan of that. But, you know, as long as you have a pretty neat background, more or less, we're all kind of used to working from home. Even if you've returned back to the office to record a video from home, it's, the taboo is gone, um, rightfully, I would, I would say. So from a production value, uh, it's more what are you saying? Are you, uh, is your content um, valuable and resonant to that person and going back to the concept of storytelling the connection is so much easier when you're telling a story the emotional connection is there and if you're able to keep it short and simple the kiss principle that's the best production value because now you're able to say what you need to say people are able to ask questions and then you can uh, do business with them it's always interesting. I, I totally agree with you. Um, you. You know, how do you make it look, especially working at home? Everybody knows you're working at home. You know, I had it super simple when I started. And now, of course, I got this fake physical backdrop behind me. People have seen. I was wondering if you were outside, before. you know, and, you know, 
<laughs> but it's, I mean, it looks pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, it's totally, it's all smokes and mirrors. Now, when it comes to quality, though, you know, there is what's interesting. And, and I'm a big fan that everybody can tell their stories. Everybody can just record stuff. But it's kind of like when it comes to sports announcers. I'm a big, big sports fan. Watch sports basically every night. You know, I got my favorite teams and we stay up. If they're on the West Coast, we stay up in the middle of the night and watch them or get up early or whatever. But there's so many channels now yeah. that there's people that are sports announcers that would have never gotten a job 20 years ago, right? Because you, because you only hired the top three, five, eight, 12, whatever, 20 years ago. And today you have to hire the top, Thousands. I don't know, 200, right? right. Or, or 2,000 right. maybe. Sure. So we do have some of that. But, but how do, when you talk about video blogs, like walk me through that. What's a video blog? What's what does that entail? Is it just me talking yeah. about a topic? Is it just like you know a content marketing blog where you know where you typically you you used to write it and now you just share your thoughts verbally or what is that? So I mean this kind of harkens back. It's a good question, Chris. This harkens back to what a blog originally was, right? So it came from the concept of a travel log, uh, and, and that being kind of how the blog created and it's this chronology of your life be it professionally or personally and it started off really personally in the professional world from a content marketing standpoint um it can be a variety of things it depends on what you want to share but it's it's meant to be kind of from the desk of it's from you personally even if you're representing a practice or a, or a firm or a company it's your personal blog and we want to get to know who you are your personal story is going to be tremendously important. And the stories that you share, client success stories, stories that didn't go so well, kind of the I told you so stories, those really resonate really well. I mean, ultimately, it can be the do's and the don'ts, the tips and the tricks, uh, the, the kind of expository kind of uh, frequently asked questions and answers. But even those can be wrapped up into anecdotes, short stories. Um, but a talking head is okay because we want to actually be able to look into your eyes. And it's sometimes awkward to stare into the uh, black hole of a camera pretending that someone else is there on the other side while recording it. No one may be, and that's awkward, uh, which is why we created these video blogging clubs at our company to bring our clients together so we don't have to record in this weird vacuum that we can actually talk to a couple of people. Instead of pretending to be talking to people, we can actually be speaking to like a small crowd of six, seven others that we get to know and they get to know us. And so we take turns video blogging together. Uh, but from that aspect, it can be anything from personal musings uh, to ultimately the frequently asked questions and answers. And all of it wrapped up in just quick anecdotes and stories enable us to find ourselves in that story as a potential client, as a referral relationship of you as a professional, I want to be able to find myself in what you are saying, and the stories enable us to do that. So uh, probably they're short and simple. Uh, I try to say two to three minutes is a nice round number from an attention span standpoint. You want them, uh, you want to keep them hungry for more. You don't want them bored or overwhelmed. And those questions that they have, maybe even more questions than they started out with, uh, are marketing opportunities. And so for from a content marketing perspective, I don't want you to have to say everything. Now, a lot of our clients are lawyers and accountants, so they're actually forbidden from giving legal advice on a video blog. The easiest way to avoid that is by keeping it short and simple. Uh, and it's a great way, it's snackable content, so to speak, while you're scrolling on LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera. These are geared for the quick type of posts. And if it's a very long or complex topic, you can have part one, part two of five, and now you're able to record it over a period of time or someone can binge watch it and really get to know you and get to like you, uh, get to trust you. And that's really when we start doing business with one another. So it's kind of like what you mentioned at the top of, of the show. Uh, it's that concept of relating to one another as professionals and as subject matter experts. So you talked about a video blogging club. What is yeah. that? How does that look? So I'm sure you've been on a Zoom meeting with a handful of people, maybe you've been to like a networking group where there's maybe a dozen people or so, and it'll look like that because it's on Zoom and it'll be about anywhere from five to 10 people. And we bring our clients together, we call them members of a video blogging club. It's kind of like a cross between a networking group, a postmasters public speaking practicing group, a mastermind group, and we basically take turns recording our video blogs in front of each other. 
And then after I record my two to three minute presentation, one of my peers, one of the other members is gonna give me feedback of what I did well, what I could have done differently, what was memorable, um, maybe some topics that I could have gone into deeper in the next video. Do they know anyone that they could share my video with? And then when it's their next person's turn, person after me, I give feedback to that person. That person gives feedback to the next person, to the next person. So everyone has really gotten to know one another, learns from one another, gives feedback, gets feedback. And most importantly, we're doing it together. It's fun and done. So after that 45 minute video blogging club session, your video blog is recorded. It's done. We then follow up with our automation software with a link to the video and you can optimize the video with captions and a headline and a call to action end screen. And we're automation partners at Video Socials with Facebook Live and LinkedIn and YouTube and WordPress. So our members are able to push a button and their social media is automated with their video content, literally push button. Uh, and their YouTube features, the read along uh, transcription along with the captions. So it's all kind of done for them. Uh, the heart of Video Socials in addition to the automation app are these video blogging clubs, which just kind of helps us stay accountable, helps us encourage each other. Because for a lot of our members, marketing is not the only job. They, their main job is to service their clients. That's really their main focus. And so marketing is very easily put on the back burner and we'll kind of get around to it. And Christoph, you know, nothing really bad happens if you don't record your video podcast or your video blog right now or tomorrow or next week. But after a little bit, it's a bad habit of not getting around to your content marketing and we make it fun and done. I, I also think it's so much easier, honestly, just to record something quickly. I mean, it's it's much easier for us to have this discussion, right, yeah. verbally and, of course, visually as well as then, you know, us sending questions back and forth and me writing an article from it. Correct. Now, I want to find out what video socials in a, in a second here, but you mentioned basically what you said is looking into, you know, the digital eyeballs of, of your audience. Right. And interestingly, I want to show you a quick clip here. This is from this year's Analytica predictions. And that's exactly what I shared on there. Brands will hop on the live streaming bandwagon. We'll hop more and more on the podcasting bandwagon. We see that already, right? All kinds of B2B brands are producing podcasts. It is a fantastic way to show your human side. It is much easier to connect like this with people as opposed to, you know, me writing something up. Then it goes through 15 approval processes and it's so watered down by the time somebody reads it. That's not building a human connection. This is. So that just reminded me your comment about my prediction and my partnership there with Analytica. Now tell us, videosocials.net, what is that? How do people get involved and, and what do you offer? Sure. Yeah, it's really for those of us who know we need to have our own video blogs. We know we ought to be having a video podcast. We know storytelling is the key of being influential in our sales and marketing. And very similar to what you literally just said, we have another aspect of our company. It's how we started called phone blogging. We interview our clients over the telephone and turn what they say into written articles. And the reason we created video socials is because the world has become very video centric. Google owns YouTube, so they prioritize videos in their search results. We know Facebook, LinkedIn, obviously Instagram, TikTok, they all prioritize video. And so from that aspect, let alone the convenience factor that you mentioned in your clip, that it's a lot easier to look in the digital eyeballs and get the content out there and make those connections. And then when we start interviewing others, it becomes even that much more powerful because the more you interview others as a video podcast, you're now creating relationships of people who want to share your content with others. First off, I'm looking forward to sharing this episode to my social media, to my circle of influence for more people to get to know you through me. It's the same thing when I do a video podcast, my guests want to, want to share their episode with their circle of influence. They're thankful and delighted and excited to do so. It's the same reason why so many of our members at Video Socials have their own live streams, their own video interview podcast, their own even audio podcast, uh, so that it's an opportunity for them to turn their networking of one-on-one, -on -one, getting to know potential clients, getting to know referral relationships, but doing it under the auspices, if you will, of a show, a video interview podcast, 
Now they're creating video content, they're creating shareable content. They're being positioned as a thought leader while interviewing other subject matter experts. So from that aspect, all that starts really at the video blogging club. So if anyone happens to be maybe a little reticent or nervous or shy or wondering how they're going to put it into two to three minute topics, well, that's what the video blogging clubs help. A lot of our members who have the longer form video podcast are around 27 minutes or half an hour. Uh, they come onto the video blogging clubs and they record their quick two minute promo video as a teaser to their longer form content, be it a video podcast or a written blog. And I don't wanna completely discount written articles because there's still a good number of people who prefer reading over watching, which is why captions and read along is so important. Our software automates it by hooking into Alexa and Amazon's uh, transcription engine. Uh, it's easy to uh, quote and copy and paste someone's words and, and text than it is to link to a specific section of a video. But nowadays you want a combination because way more people watch the video version. It's kind of think of it as like the best-selling book and then the movie version comes out and the movie ends up doing a lot better in terms of box office sales. And while that's not the only barometer of success in business, it is the success factor that it's a bigger selling factor. The movie does better. Even if most people agree the movie isn't as good as the book, nonetheless, the video version does better. And you're gonna find the same thing as you create a video blog and a video podcast in addition to anything written on your website from a search engine standpoint to a social media standpoint. So I would recommend anyone watching and listening to come on to a video blogging club and, and kind of get to know the concept of what it means to, to record videos together, fun and done, use automation software to automate the social media, the grunt work that they need to be done by you. It can be done by a robot, by our app. Uh, and then eventually we're gonna start, start seeing the examples of a video interview podcast uh, incidentally, we actually bring together our whole community of live streamers and podcasters once a month. We've been doing it uh, one time in December. We're doing it again at the end of January, so now at the end of every month. We bring together over 100 people who interview others through a live stream or video interview podcast, and it becomes a community of us sharing and getting to know each other and getting booked on more shows because it's a great opportunity to get our brand and get our message and get our expertise out there. Fantastic tips. And, you know, I actually am a firm believer in any podcast host, you have to share some of your own stories. Now, it's a fine balance because if, if we have a 27 minute show and I'm hogging 14 minutes and I'm sharing just my own stories for 14 minutes, Vikram, at some point you're going to say, why am I even here? I actually had, I think it was Mark Schaefer who did like 125 um, podcast episodes when his book came out. And he said there was one episode I was on and it was not my show. And he says, you know, for the first 10, 12 minutes, they didn't even let me get a word in. Like, why am I here? So you have to find that balance. But you need to do more than just asking questions, because otherwise, you know, why are you there? It could be anybody. Right. right? You got to share Correct. some of your own experiences. Um, and I think asking questions, there is a little bit of an art and science to that, too. Um, you know, let's talk about where do we put these videos? That's my next question for you. But sure. the reason, what I want to mention quickly is one reason why we jump in into a question. Here's the mm -hmm. reason why. A lot of podcasts, you know what they do? They say, here's Vikram. Vikram, tell us where did you grow up? How did you get to where you were today? What's your company? And there's a lot of chit chat, right? But what sure. I want to do is get to the topic, right? Because people <laughs> listen to the beginning of the show and, you know, like, let's get them in the door. And then yeah, we sure. can tell them about your company later. We can tell them about you later. I know yeah, they can get people will care about that, right? But we've got to get them in the door. That's why I usually like to ask a very, um, not very, but a um, little bit more edgy, maybe sometimes controversial question early on. So where should we house these videos, these video blogs? How do we get them in front of people? Where do we keep them? Well, first of all, it's where are your clients, where are your prospective clients and your referral relationships? I mean, that's that's the first question. You know, it depends, right? It, it, you may not be a Facebook person per se, but your audience is, your, your circle of influence, your referral relationships, your clients are. Well, obviously, you want to be posting your videos there. Likewise, with LinkedIn, it depends if you're of the generation or your audience is of the generation of a TikTok generation. So it depends, first of all, the kind the, the specific social media. 
definitely social media, but which social media channel, every channel caters to a specific demographic. Um, and some are more broad in general than others, but you know, Twitter has a different demographic and style of person than let's say LinkedIn versus Facebook versus Instagram or TikTok. Um, I think I kind of covered the basics. When it comes to video, I'm a huge fan of put it on YouTube. It is the second largest search engine owned by the largest search engine. So it makes sense for it to be on YouTube and optimized for YouTube and then optimized for search that you're using the description because people may not literally be searching um, for that topic or maybe they're not literally searching for you, but some combination of it, they are searching for you. They're trying to vet you. Your content should come up. They're trying to find information on that topic. You should come up. So YouTube becomes a, a powerful engine. Um, but then comes your website. Your website, ultimately, your office on the internet, it should be the clearinghouse of all your content. Uh, so it's a combination of your written content as well as your video blogs, including your video podcasts. And that should be in some area of your website, usually the blog section. And don't forget email. Email tends to be kind of the ugly stepchild in the world of internet marketing. No one wants to talk about it, but it, it is still the most powerful channel. It is the most direct channel to someone. A, you should have permission. B, you don't want to be a pain in the neck about it and nagging people, but it is a direct channel that you really own. Ultimately, when you're posting on social media and you have it on your website, for me, all those roads lead back to an email list and you're sending it by email. More people check more email more times a day, even more than checking social media. And so people have to literally log into social media in order to see you. Email, it's ubiquitous. They're going to check you out. They're going to see you. Now, there is a definitely negative. There is definitely a con with, uh, with email. We're all drowning in the amount of email we're getting. And so you need to be relevant. The subject line needs to be as punchy as a newspaper headline. So that is true. But as uh, from a channel perspective, don't forget to include your videos in your email. Now, you're not literally including the video in your email yet. That technology hasn't really come yet to, in, a, in a great degree. But it's a link, right? It's video image with a link to uh, that video that hopefully is an embed on your website. Keep them on your website. As much as social media is where the people are, you're looking to bring them back to your website so that people can get to know you and get to know your firm a little bit more effectively in the comfort of your website. That is your ecosystem. That is your microcosm, not social media. You go out and get them off of social media as much as possible. I'll mention one other thing, Christoph, that very often people have social media links on their website you don't want people really leaving your website to go to social media. Keep them on your website. So ultimately, that's where video is going to live. Your combination of your, uh, your social media, your website, and your email. That triad uh, should really kind of be built into your video blogging. Um, that'll be a, a general way of starting. Uh, and then, of course, you have the podcast platforms. If you when you have a video podcast, when you start interviewing others, that's going to unlock a whole other world. I mean, we mentioned uh, when we were offline that this is going to be available on Roku, which is kind of neat. I, I don't think I've ever been on Roku. Um, you know, obviously, there's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, which I personally use on Android. You're able to unlock more channels as you go into the world of video podcasts, even beyond video blogging. But start with the video blog, because that's something very quick and simple that you could do in a video blogging club and get it out there tomorrow. Uh, the video podcast is going to take a little bit longer for you to do. I'm just glad you mentioned podcasting, because when you said the last thing I'll mention, then you mentioned it after that. I was like, well, I'm going to mention podcasts. But I'm glad <laughs> you mentioned it, because you can actually push all, like, that's what I do, right? We take yeah. all this content here we push it into the podcast channels right. and now spotify for example you can watch this yep. podcast the video version it's pretty new it's cool. um so i wouldn't be surprised if other channels do the same thing down the road you know and they they actually they they do that as well and, and show the video on apple podcast or google podcast yeah i'm happy to hear about that i actually didn't know about that chris and i'm not a huge spotify you uh, listener uh, or watcher and how, uh, but my podcast is available through Spotify, but I need to kind of now take a look at how do I get the video version into Spotify? So thank you for, you know, I learned something new every yeah. day. You bet. And I can send you the link and, and um, I'll try Thanks. to remember to share it again on, on social. Yeah. It is available on ChristophTrap.com. Um, you have to apply. So it is, uh, okay. it's relatively new, but that's kind of, that's kind of how it works. Right yeah. now right. in, in the last um, 90 seconds or so here, tell us about, so we talked about written content, we talked about all these different channels, but how do we start? How do we 
um, you know, make sure we actually have time to do it. Now, I'll give you a quick example. Yeah. But, you know, like we do this show and then I literally just push it everywhere. And it's, you mm-hmm. know, like four, four clicks. So I right. use the technology to get that done. Right. Um, how do people that don't have time, and I don't have time either, how right. do they get started? Look, I mean, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that's why we created video socials. Our clients are attorneys, they're accountants, they're consultants, they're coaches, they're busy, well-seasoned, well-experienced professionals. Uh, they're busy in the right way. They're working and serving their clients. That's where they make money, but that's also how they impact the world. So marketing has to be an engine that is done one way or another for them. They have to be involved with their subject matter expertise, but we created our video blogging clubs and our brand or automation app for that busy professional who knows that they need to leverage technology and a team to get things done. That's well worth your time to bring on technology and bring on a team. And we wanna keep it simple for our clients. We wanna make it where it is push button. They show up at showtime for a video podcast. They show up at showtime for their video blog and everything else is done for them. So if that sounds like you, come on to a video socials club and check it out and really see other professionals doing it in action. You get to meet our clients and talk to them and see why they are raving fans and how they're able to leverage their time to really access the word of mouth referrals that are happening through social media uh, using video, video blogs and video podcasts. And of course, when we do video, we can reach a lot more people. At the same time, as opposed to having one-on-one conversations, when we had Marcus Sheridan on the show who wrote the book on video selling, um, and that's not the title, but um, check that out, that episode. Um, very interesting. You just answer questions that come up over and over and over. Yeah. Vikram, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you making the time and sharing your insights. Thanks, Christoph. It was great to be here. That's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Please rate and review our show on your favorite podcast channels. And don't forget to share this episode with your networks. We appreciate you. Until next time, let the best stories.